Hi, welcome back to Enzyme Function and Kinetics. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. All right, so in the last video, we looked at how you analyze a line weaver Burke plot when you have the, re the linear regression line. So that means that you would have had to have either been given the linear regression equation, which if you recall, was in the form of a y equals mx plus b. That's the equation for a straight line. And it actually is a lot easier to do that because you can get more exact numbers. But what happens when, you ha when, you, when you're on an exam and you have to generate a line weaver Burke plot by hand, construct the line, and you obviously don't have a y equals mx plus b for that? Well, then you're forced to, to eyeball this. And it turns out that you can do this, although it's not as accurate as using an Excel uh, graphic uh, type of program, but you can still do this on an exam and they'll say something like estimate the Vmax, estimate the Km, and so forth. All right, so here's how you're going to go about doing it. So in theory, you should have been given um, a, a table of, of, of data points. So uh, a substrate concentration and what initial rate was observed, and maybe five or so of those. And then you take the reciprocal of those, right, and you plot one over the initial rate versus one over the substrate concentration. That's what we, that's the double reciprocal plot. That's the line weaver burke plot. Two different names for it. Let's just say for some, just, just so we know, um, let's say that this is in units of inverse micromolars and let's say this is in units of seconds per micromolar, okay? Just so we have units here. And what we're going to do is we're going to, without a linear regression line equation, we're going to estimate the Vmax and the Km value, all right? So here's how we're going to go about doing it. Remember the line weaver burke equation. It says that 1 over the initial rate is equal to the Km over the Vmax times 1 over the substrate concentration plus 1 over the Vmax. And this is in the form of a y equals mx plus b. Now, the, the, the place I like to start out with is finding the Vmax. Just for me, conceptually, that's the easiest thing to do. The 1 over the Vmax is the y-intercept. So where's the y-intercept? That's right there. That's the y-intercept, all right? So the y-intercept is 1 over the Vmax. So B, the y-intercept, is 1 over the Vmax. Now, what is the y-intercept here? Now, again, you don't have a y equals mx plus b equation. If you did, you would just look at the number that B is and take the reciprocal. But I'm looking at where it crosses the y-axis, and I'm going to estimate that as... I'm going to say that's about 9 seconds per micromolar, okay? Uh, the units aren't as important here, but, I mean, they're still important, but the, the thing you want to get as close as possible is the number. So I'm saying that the y-intercept is going to be about 9 seconds per micromolar. So I'm going to take the reciprocal of that, and when I do, the Vmax is going to be 1 over 9 micromolar per second, and that's approximately 0.11 micromolar per second. And that is going to be my Vmax, 0.11 micromolar per second. All right? Now, again, if there's there, there would be more than one way to figure out the Km here, all right? Um, there's two options. One, number one, the slope of the line notice is Km over Vmax, and we just found the Vmax. But again, we don't have a y equals mx plus b equation, so we don't explicitly know the slope. Now, you could do the point-slope formula, but that seems like a lot of work to me. Instead, what I'd rather do is come over here to this point, the x-intercept, and I'm going to recognize that the x-intercept, the x-intercept is equal to negative 1 over the km, all right? And I will again eyeball this. So what is the x-intercept in this case? The x-intercept to me, this is negative 1, this is negative 2, so maybe I'm going to say about... Um, Let's say it's about negative two, let's say this is about negative two and two thirds, okay? Which, if I remember how to do this, this is gonna be three times two is six, this is negative eight thirds, okay? And the units are gonna be inverse micromolar, okay? So I'm guessing this is about negative eight thirds, this point right here. So, how do, so let me just do this. Negative 1 over Km is equal to negative 8 over 3 inverse micromolar. So how do I get the Km? Well, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take the reciprocal of both sides. I'm going to take the reciprocal, 
and then I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 1. So what I get is I get that the Km is going to be equal to 3 over 8 micromolar. And if I'm thinking about this right, that is going to be about 0 0.375 micromolar. Someone can verify that, but I believe that's about what it is. So this is going to be the Km of this enzyme. All right. Now, one other thing is if you happened to know the enzyme concentration, then you could potentially figure also you could also figure out the K cat or turnover number of this enzyme. So let me go ahead and just make up an enzyme concentration. Let's suppose that I have a concentration of whatever enzyme this is, a total enzyme concentration. Um, let's suppose that this is, I don't know, let's suppose it is two micromolar. Okay, I don't know, I'm just making that number up. All right, so two micromolar. All right, so how do you find the K-cat? Well, remember that Vmax is equal to the total enzyme concentration times the K-cat. So if I want to figure out what the K-cat is, I'm going to divide Vmax by the enzyme concentration, and I get Vmax divided by the total enzyme concentration, and that has to equal the K-cat. All right, so what was my Vmax? My Vmax was, let's see, it was about 0.11, and by the way, that one is repeating, and it's going to be micromolar per second. What's my total enzyme concentration? It's two micromolar. Now, one stipulation here that's very important is that the concentration units of the rate, Vmax, have to be the same concentration units of the enzyme. If one of these was nanomolar, say, and the other was micromolar, you'd have to convert them both to the same, potentially both to micromolar. But here, notice that the micromolars cancel, and so what is my K-cat going to be? My K-cat, or turnover number, is going to be 0 0.11 repeating divided by 2, which, if I'm thinking about this right, is 0 0.055 repeating, and that's going to be in units of inverse seconds. So if you wanted to figure out what this was, let's see, 1, 2, so about 5.56 times 10 to the minus second, inverse seconds, and that is going to be my K-cat or turnover number, about 5.56 times 10 to the minus second, inverse seconds. All right? The only other thing that you could potentially do is you could calculate something that we haven't really talked a lot about called catalytic efficiency. So catalytic efficiency is equal to the K-cat of the enzyme divided by the K-m of the enzyme. Now, the K-cat we just found was, let's see, it's about 0.055 repeating, and that was in units uh, per second, right? The K-m of the enzyme we just found was 0.375 micromolar. Now, you can go ahead and calculate this with your calculator, but whatever this number turns out to be, Okay, it's some number, 0 0.05555 divided by 0.375. And because our Km is in units of micromolar and our Kcat's in units of per second, our efficiency will be in units of inverse micromolar inverse seconds. Now, the catalytic efficiency can be in any um, set of these units. It could be a nanomolar, inverse nanomolar, inverse minute. It could be uh, inverse molar, inverse hour. It just has to be an inverse concentration unit and an inverse time unit. But this would be how you go about calculating the catalytic efficiency. It's always the K-cat divided by the K-m. Okay? And you can report the efficiency in any units that you want. It, you just have to have them as an inverse concentration unit times an inverse time unit. Okay? But it can re be reported anyway as long as you report the right set of units. All right? So this is how you go about analyzing a line weaver Burke plot without the linear regression line data. And so that's without all the y equals mx plus b. The point is you kind of have to eyeball it here, um, but hopefully this makes sense. Um, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. We're going to do a little bit more with line weaver Burke plots, and then we're going to move into something called a Haynes-Wolf plot, something that's also fairly useful. Thanks for watching.